In this video, I'm going to introduce a principle that I use widely on many of the Moodle sites that I work on. And that's the idea of rather than me uploading the same image lots and lots of times to different places where that image is being used, I upload that image once to a central location and then I link to it. Now, this has certain advantages. There are a couple of caveats that you will need to be aware of, and I will mention those at the end of the video. So make sure you watch to the end before deciding whether you want to use this particular technique or not. On some of the Moodles, I will put my image repository that I'm setting up on the very front page so that I can use the images throughout the site. And in other situations, I'll have one within each course. Now, in this case, I'm using an example of having one within each course, but it's exactly the same principles if I was putting it on the front page. So what I've done is I've created this item which I've called course images. And this is actually an activity type called a Lightbox Gallery. So it's a third party plugin called Lightbox Gallery, which you need to get installed. You then add it to your course and we pretty much want the default settings. So it's relatively straightforward. And then when you go into this as a teacher, you have the ability to add your images. So this is my collection of images that I've added so far. And all I have to do as a teacher is add images. And then you can just simply drag and drop. And you can add multiple ones in one go. So you can add more than one image. And you just add images. And it will then add it to your gallery. Now you could provide extra bits of information uh, for the images. You can rename them if you so wanted. I generally just leave them as they are. So now that I've added the images, what we can do is each image now has a web address. So if I wanted to use this particular image here, if I right click on the image and I copy link address, I'm just gonna go into Word and I'm just gonna paste. So what you will see is the image, uh, the web address for that particular image. Now the one above is one of the other images in here. And what you will see is that the vast majority of the web address is exactly the same. That there, is the same for both links. The only thing that changes is the bit at the end, which is the file name of the image that I have uploaded. And that's the key thing here. So if I wanted to now use that image, all I have to do is copy that address. And obviously I wouldn't normally copy it from here. I would just simply right click and copy link. I'm just gonna open a new tab and I'm gonna go into a book in this case. Now in my book, I've already got a page and I've got an image that's been added by the traditional method where it's been uploaded directly to the page. But I'm gonna turn editing on. I'm gonna add a new page called adding via URL. And then in my page, I'm gonna add my content. And when I want to add the image, the first part is the same. I click on the add image icon, but rather than using the find or upload an image, I'm gonna paste in the image URL that link that I copied earlier. You should see the image appearing in the box below. You can then add your alternate text. And you can then go in to alter the size. Now, if I'm setting an absolute size, I'm going to set this as 500 wide. What I will do is I will not set a height. I will only ever set one or the other. So in this case, I've set the width. And you can do things like the spacing and the borders if that's appropriate as well. So that's put my image in as such. Now, there are a couple of advantages of this particular method. One is if I'm using an image that's being used across the site, and then in the future, I decide I actually want to replace that image with something else. Well, all I would have to do is come back to my gallery. I could then delete the image that I want to replace and then put a new one in its position. And as long as the picture has the same type, in this case, as long as it's a JPEG, JPG extension, and as long as it's called exactly the same thing, then the URL will be the same. So I can actually update all the images across the area 
in one go rather than having to try and find all the places where I have put that particular image. So if you've got an image that's let's say a diagram that you've drawn and it's been used in multiple places, you realize there's an error in it or you change the logo or something like that, it's much easier to change it in this method. And the other reason I like this is I'm only uploading the image once. So from a server point of view, it's using up less memory. So on some of the sites that I work on, that is very, very significant, especially where you've got lots of courses and each course has got the same images in because they're kind of icons. That can make a big difference to the total server size. Now, the caveats that we have to think about here is if I were to take a copy of this course and I was going to back it up and restore it. When I restore it, the light box itself will have a different um, a number, a different ID number, a different address, which means that the images within it will also have a different address. Problem with that is that the, in this case, my book that is pointing to it will be pointing to the old light box, not the new one. Now, it's not a major problem in some respects because you can use the Moodle's find and replace functionality. And all you'd have to do is find this bit here uh, from the old course and then replace it with the same thing for the new one and just change that number there from the old to the new that would then update the links within the book to point to the new lightbox gallery the only downside of that though is you wouldn't just be updating the new course you'd actually be updating the old course as well which may be a problem if you've still got students on it so there's something there you've got to think through as to whether that is a likely scenario and if it is you may not want to use it the other issue is if you did have a scenario where your site had a catastrophic failure and it had to be rebuilt from a backup and depending on how it was rebuilt, there is a possibility that the whole thing might have to be, uh, might have completely new uh, numbers and things. Um, and if you've got lots of courses, each with its own light box in, you'd have to go through each course in turn and then do the process of kind of find a replace. So it could become a little bit messy. I've never ever had a catastrophic failure of a Moodle in all the years that I've been supporting them, but obviously it is something that is possible. Uh, so we just have to be aware of the caveats. I'm Dave Ford. If you wish to get in touch, then please look at my contact details on the screen. I'm based in the UK, but I work with organizations all over the globe providing consultancy, training and resource development services, mainly in the areas of Moodle and Tatara.